What's up everybody, JJ here, and today I'm checking out the most powerful and largest laser I've ever used. This is the Longer B1. It is a 30 watt diode laser. I've been doing a lot of fun woodworking projects with it to test it out. Let's get right into it. This is three times more powerful than the last laser I checked out. It's the same idea. There's a bunch of six watt lasers in there and they're using a bunch of mirrors to focus all that laser power into one straight beam out the front. And with power comes great responsibility. This is kind of getting outside of the range of a hobbyist at home use. This is really a professional machine. If you're making money off your laser, spending a bit more to make something like this can make sense. And I really wanted to start off with the safety side here because these really aren't for everyone. This is a lot of power and can do a lot of damage very quickly. So I've been using a full 3M mask the entire week. Whenever I was in the room where this was running or had been running, I kept wearing this because my exhaust system worked well for five and 10 watt lasers, but this creates a lot more smoke and ex bad fumes are gonna be coming off of this. Toxic bad fumes are coming off this. So you really shouldn't be breathing that in at all. It smells like a campfire, but it's way worse than a campfire. Beyond the fumes that are gonna be coming off of it, that laser is pretty dangerous. You do need to keep it away from yourself. Inside an opaque box is the safest way to do it. Put a simple webcam in there. That is the best way to do it. These, I wouldn't trust these with my eyesight. So if you are thinking about picking up a laser, do think about what other things you need to go with it. An enclosure and an exhaust system are essential. Setup was fairly straightforward. It comes as four separate parts and then you run some belts and you plug in a few wires where it needs to. Really straightforward, takes maybe 20 minutes to get this up and configured. Also in the box, it comes with its own air pump. This is a pretty simple DC 30 amp air pump. It's not a super high airflow pump. It's only 30 liters per minute at 0.03 megapascals of pressure. So that's something I have heard from some other reviewers that you might need to get a larger air compressor for using something this powerful. Overall, the hardware of a laser cutter like this is pretty straightforward. XY motion system, a laser on the front, an air compressor on the side. That's pretty much it. The controller on the front here is also pretty simple. There's no screen this time. The cheaper, longer Ray 5 came with a full touch screen on the front, which was really nice for offline printing. With this one, you do need to have a laptop nearby or you could use the app on your phone. I use Lightburn software, so it's really easy to have a laptop right next to it, setting up tests, changing configurations and things like that makes it really easy to do. When it comes to laser engraver test files, I like to use this one by the Make or Break YouTube channel. I will link their channel down in the description below. They are more experienced with laser engravers, but I did modify a little bit. I should have modified how these letters are typed in there because it did get a little bit too dark. I also did leave out some of these squares, expecting them to be fully burned through since I've had that issue on other laser engravers. But this does show really well what sort of power you can get out of various speeds and power levels. Down here in the bottom right corner, it shows you what sort of differences you'll get between vertical and horizontal lines. It shows that vertical lines are a little bit more accurate than horizontal lines showing up here. Next up was the cut test up in the top right corner up here. And it shows that at 750 millimeters per minute and 75% power, that was able to fully cut straight through. On the back, we can see that some were getting close to cutting through, but weren't quite there. This 1000 millimeter per second and 100% power was really close. And if I do push it with my finger, I am able to break it out there. The next test I did was this map of Middle Earth. It's supposed to be a really large map, so it is scaled down to a really small resolution. And it's impressive how much detail is able to stay here. Of course, it would have more detail if I scaled this up to match the entire build volume of this laser engraver, but it is impressive to see the detail coming through at such a small size. Here's another example of an image being laser engraved. This is Ada as a puppy in a field. Not a great picture to be laser engraved here because there's not a ton of contrast. She kind of blends into the grasses around her, but still on this scale, you are able to tell that's Ada. I could easily laser engrave this as a Christmas ornament and my wife would love it. Another big advantage here is the speed. I cut out other things, shapes like this gear here, less than a minute to be able to cut this out. I did test out cutting thick things. This is a half inch board. It did cause a lot of charring to cut something this big, but it was able to cut it in one pass. They say it can do up to 25 millimeters thick of wood. So really impressive to be able to cut through something this large. You can create some really big models using cuts this large. 
The next project I tried to take on was making a few coasters. The top part is my logo cut out of wood, and the bottom of it is a simple 100 millimeter diameter circle. The top part here can be cut out in less than two minutes, and the bottom is less than one minute to cut out. So less than three minutes to be able to cut out this entire coaster. This is a great example of where this laser cutter makes sense. If you're making money off making custom coasters like this, if you can make them in a third of the time of a cheaper laser engraver, then it makes so much sense to upgrade to something like this. You can pump out something like this in a few minutes each. There are a lot of basic safety features that are good to see here. There's a flame sensor here. There's a key that needs to be inserted and turned before you can power on the machine. There's an emergency stop over here. There's tilt detection, so if it were to fall off a table for some reason, you're not gonna just shoot lasers across the room. There's also limit switches to keep it within the build volume. But this laser system isn't perfect and there are some downsides to it. And a big one for me is that just it's so powerful. I really don't need something this large and powerful. It kind of doesn't fit great inside of my enclosure since I built that around the previous longer Ray 5, which has a slightly smaller build volume. Also with more power, it means my current exhaust system doesn't work as well with this one. So if I were to keep using this laser, I would need to upgrade my exhaust and I really don't need the speed benefits that come with this. Since I'm really just using it for hobbyist projects, if a project like this takes 10 minutes versus two minutes, I'm fine with it. Another thing I would love to start seeing at this price point is putting them in enclosures. CO2 lasers always come with an enclosure, but diode lasers usually don't because usually they're targeting a cheaper price point. Now that they're getting more powerful and larger, it would be nice to have them just come in a full enclosure. 3D printers in this price range usually come with an enclosure anyways. It seems like something they could do, and hopefully in the next couple years we'll start seeing diode lasers in a full enclosure with a good exhaust system all built in as one package. Because currently, this isn't all you need. You need all these extra things you gotta figure out on your own. Another big usability downside to this one is that there isn't a screen built in. There is a screen port, so you could get a separate screen to be able to use it offline. It would just make usability way easier if you didn't always need a laptop attached to your laser engraver. So overall, the Longer B1 is a powerful, quick laser engraver that can blast through projects way faster than something smaller and less powerful can do. If that's something that interests you, I do have some links in the description that can get you a few discounts on these things. Or if you're more like me and more interested in the five or 10 watt lasers, I will have some links for those as well in the description. I thought diode lasers were maxing out at around 10 or 20 watts, but Longer and other companies have shown us they've figured out a ways to make it even more powerful. Go out there, create something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video.